let us start with the quantification of systolic and diastolic functions of left ventricle the views required are parasternal long axis view apical four chamber view and ap apical two chamber view now lvf that is the systolic function for the left ventricle so you need either m mode or two dimensional whichever you prefer but m mode has some limitations it is better to prefer 2d but it also has limitations the limitations are if you cannot identify the endocardium properly you are going to miscalculate it many times you may not get proper windows to get a very proper two dimensional view then also chances that you may not calculate it properly so within this uh, limitations you try to calculate and get ejection fraction which is most wanted figure from echocardiologist so m mode is called as tickles method and 2d is called as modified simpson biplane or single plane both can be used biplane where you use 4c and 2c views in single either you can use 2c chambers or two chamber view or or you can use four chamber view either of these two the normal values are 54 to 74 less than 54 it may be impaired ejection fraction more than 74 it may be a dynamic hyperdynamic state where you can find many patients with uh, thyrotoxicosis anemia where there may be more than normal ejection fraction so just now i have told you how to take ejection fraction or how to calculate ejection fraction by m mode so you have to take m mode plane at the tip of mitral wall this is what you will see and then you have to measure this just i have demonstrated that you get to measure at ivs then posterior wall uh, lv cavity then posterior wall in diastole and same thing in systole this will calculate ejection fraction for you this is a good and fast method the views can be taken easily you should not include you should not include sigmoid septum while calculating ejection fraction that is to be excluded and if it is not possible to exclude then better not to take uh, view in this method or not to calculate ejection fraction by m mode this is again this is biplane that is you are you are using two planes four chamber and two chamber so this is uh, so in systole and diastole so this just now i have demonstrated you this method uh, then lv diastolic dysfunction so this is all systolic ejection fraction is a systolic function of the left ventricle now diastolic functions equally important the commonest cause of left ventricular failure is diastolic dysfunction which is which is not given due importance so you must also look for diastolic dysfunction so diastolic dysfunction is evaluated by doppler studies so ea ratio just now i have shown you e waves and a waves so normally e is taller than a wave in normal situation in type 1 diastolic dysfunction there may occur reversal of ea ratio that that means the a becomes taller than e wave a becomes taller than e wave there is a physiology or or pathophysiology behind this normally left ventricle when relaxes there is sudden gush of blood from left atrium to left ventricle that is called as rapid ventricular filling phase 90% of blood is ejected from left atrium to left ventricle during that phase that is why e is taller than a wave in normal situation but when left ventricle becomes more stiffer so this does not occur the rapid ventricular phase is reduced less blood enters in the left ventricle during rapid ventricular phase because the left ventricular pressure rises and it closes the mitral wall earlier it seizes the blood to come from left atrium to left ventricle so, so the rest of job is done by a wave that is because of left atrial contraction so a wave becomes taller so this is the first feature of type 1 diastolic dysfunction that there is a reversal of ea ratio so e a becomes taller than e wave okay now type 2 is called as pseudo normalization where the atrial size increases and pressure increases then the ventricle so ea ratio is maintained back but it's a thing it's worsening from type 1 to type 2 
where EA ratio will be maintained as normal, but LA is enlarged. And type three is where EA ratio is more than two, a one point five to two. In our case, it was one point nine nine, almost two, with dilated LA is called as type three diastolic dysfunction. We to make it out. Chart which shows you various uh, measurements we take for diastolic dysfunction. So EA ratio, as I told you, should be uh, normally should be 0.08 or more. Grade one, it should be more than one. Grade two, it will be pseudo normalization. That is actually again back to 0.82 less than two. Three is more than two. Then E. This is for tissue Dopplers. I have not included this in this study. Then from TR, as I told you, TR velocity. If the TR velocity is more than 2.8 meters per second, then this may be normal. But if TR velocities are more, more than 2.8, then this is grade two or grade three. So combination of EA ratio more than two, then dilated left uh, dilated left atrium. And the LA volume more than 34. All these things point towards type three diastolic dysfunction. So, this is what I'm trying to show you uh, here. The EA, which is normal. This is DT, that is deceleration time of E wave. You can see. Look at the length of the arrow. Here the length of the arrow are almost same. This so this is type one. This, this is normal. Here the A has become tall. Deceleration time is maintained. Here deceleration time has reduced because of the closure of the flow from left atrium to the diastole because of the raised left ventricular pressure. There is reversal of the E again, it has become super. There we will find the decision time has markedly reduced, and this is type three, where the A wave also has reduced because the left atrium atrial fatigue has occurred. Left atrium in a stage of failure, cannot pump the blood sufficiently, so there is a marked. Increase in EA ratio and marked shortening of the DT. That the velocity is from the right side. That is, TR velocity will be increased because of the raised uh, uh, pulmonary artery pressure, secondary to left ventricular failure, and there will be dilatation of left atrium. All these things together will let you know about the increasing or deteriorating condition of the diastolic dysfunction. This is all about systolic and diastolic function of the right ventri uh, left ventricle. Now let us move to left uh, right ventricle. So quantitative RV size that we have just now seen how it is to be measured. So as I told you, the ratio of RV to LV is one is to three in normal condition. So this ratio may be altered. This ratio may be at par with LV or even may be larger than LV. If that is occurring, then this is the point will favor in. Suggest you of right ventricular overload. So, RV enlargement should be less than LV because for RV to enlarge, for large to compete with LV, and then it go, should go beyond that. Then only can be apparent that RV is enlarged. So, RV may be at LV still it will be enlarged. One is to three ratio. If it becomes one is, then also you can call. Dilated RV, RV may be larger than LV. So this all this combination can occur in right ventricular enlargement. So you can measure this size. Then RV dimension in diastole at base, you can measure these parameters, and that will let you know actual dilated RV. So if you find that the normal dimension is uh, less than 4.5, then may RV be larger than 3.5. Then RBOT just now I told you that 
the breeder has uh, is not actually just about the right tone itself. Actually, also, uh, and it's not the uh, good normal dimension is three point three. Uh, the right vertical thickness is measured at approximately 10 meters. The thickness is less than 5. Six feet. And this color is right vertical at the top. That's the kind of medicine. Thank you very much. 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 And the right one is the volume overload fine in patients with hyperspin regurgitation. So PSX view at RBOT, just now I have told you to be taken in short axis view. This is the first measurement. The second how if it's more because of right ventricular pressure overload so let us move to right ventricular systolic function tricuspid annulus plane systolic excursion it means during systole this is a tricuspid annular plane which moves towards apex when the LV contracts this plane moves upward towards apex ok so this apex moment should be enough to call a normal systolic function of this instance in this patient the TAPAC is 20 millimeters means it is more than 16 it is normal but if it is less than 16 that means this moment is reduced and this is because of the decrease in the systolic function of the left right ventricle so drop in TAPVC suggests to have decrease right ventricle systolic pressure this is this picture depicting the RVH now the features of RVH because many times you have to face this problem in ICU where where you have seen inferior vena cava for a clot so the doctor may say please, please uh, look whether he has, it has been embolized or not and should look for pulmonary embolism so what signs you may find of pulmonary embolism so pulmonary artery and and they rise in pulmonary systolic and diastolic pressures so this can be measured by TRZ if TRZ if you measure TRZ and to this you have to add the mean right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure is calculated by looking at IVC so IVC if less than 20 if collapse is more than 50 percent then IVC pressure is less than 5 ok or more so for the from this velocity you have estimated a trans uh, uh, it, and at 15 is 45 the, the pulmonary artery pressure is 45 45 is definitely higher pressure and a combination of clot in clot in the right uh, clot in the deep veins of the leg and a raised PA pressure it definitely point towards the evidence of pulmonary embolism so this is how this is the tricuspid jet we have calculated the PASP so the the pressure the, the trans tricuspid gradient is 104 to which we have add, added 15 so pressure is now pulmonary artery pressure is now 119 it's very very high so this pressure you will never find in acute core pulmonary which occurs in pulmonary embolism this pressure is always suggestive of a very chronic uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension so this is how we can calculate this is acute pulmonary embolism what you will find you look at this cartoon 
where RA is dilated compared to LV. RV hypokinesia. This, if RV faces sudden acute pressure on the load, it doesn't have sufficient muscle to overtake that. It immediately fails. It cannot sustain that much of pressure. We always find RV dilatation and lack of movements. RV contraction is markedly reduced. Look at the septum. This septum has a convexity towards left ventricle. Normally, it follows the pressure. If pressure in RV is more, it will go to left ventricle. If pressure is left ventricle more, it will move towards right ventricle. So this indicates a steep rise in right ventricular pressure. So the septum has moved towards left, convexity is moved towards left ventricle. Then tricuspid radiation, pulmonary arterial hypertension may be noticed. And then lack of decreased inspiratory collapse of IVS and direct visualization of thrombus if you are lucky. If you are lucky, you can demonstrate thrombus either in IVS, close to RA or in right atrium, right ventricle, RVOT, main pulmonary artery. Anywhere if thrombus is there, that can be demonstrated. That is a sure short sign of pulmonary embolism. So, conclusion, these are very simple calculations needed to evaluate LV and RV. Most of calculations are done by the machine. Our job is to properly acquire the images and take measurements at appropriate places so that these figures can be compared in future. Thank you very much for the patient listening.